Horror movies can be just as scary to make as they are to watch. Just ask the people who nearly lost their lives on set. From slasher classics to low-budget B-movies, the cast and crew members of these frightening flicks had some seriously close calls. In 1996, Scream helped revitalize the slasher genre, mostly by making fun of it. With no shortage of references to classic horror flicks, Sidney Prescott and her friends find themselves targeted by a mysterious killer in a ghost face mask. Everyone is a potential suspect. Could it be Sidney's jilted boyfriend Billy Loomis? Or maybe the chaotic wildcard Stu Mocker? Spoiler alert, it's both of them. Not only did Billy kill Sidney's mom a year prior for having an affair with his father, but he and Stu have been terrorizing the town of Woodsboro as an elaborate revenge plot. Watch a few movies, take a few notes. <laughs> It was fun. <laughs> no! Oh, where are you going? During the climactic showdown, Sydney stabs Billy twice using the tip of an umbrella. Pulling off the stunt ended up proving more dangerous than it seemed, causing considerable pain to actor Skeet Ulrich. The first time she stabbed him, the stunt went as planned, as the retractable tip worked perfectly and hit him on the ideal spot of his protective vest. However, during the second stab, actress Neve Campbell not only struck Ulrich in the unprotected part of his chest, but hit him right where he had undergone open heart surgery years earlier. Needless to say, this hurt Ulrich a great deal, but he channeled it into his work, as the cut in which he was injured ended up making it into the movie. In 2022, the reboot of Scream, confusingly also called Scream, was the first installment in the beloved franchise that wasn't directed by the legendary Wes Craven, who passed away in 2015. That didn't prevent it from paying tribute to the original in a number of ways, including a nearly catastrophic accident on set. One of the fresh faces to debut in the Scream series was actress Melissa Barrera, who played Sam Carpenter, the biological daughter of Billy Loomis. She's been suffering from hallucinations of her murderous dead dad, and if that wasn't bad enough, someone new has put on the Ghostface mask. Barrera almost became a victim of Ghostface in real life. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, she said that while most of the scenes utilized a rubber knife, a real one was swapped in whenever the directors wanted it to glisten in the light. While shooting a scene featuring a real knife, the gloves that the Ghostface actor wore were so slippery that it flew out of their hand and hit the window behind Barrera, just barely missing her. Despite the danger, she was more worried about the film's stunt coordinator, saying, Poor Keith Ward, our stunt guy, was mortified. I felt so bad for him. I was like, I'm fine. And they were like, yeah, but it could have gone really, really wrong. Imagine if you would have gotten stabbed with a flying knife. It often gets overshadowed by Rosemary's Baby and The Exorcist. But The Omen is a truly terrifying film in the demonic child subgenre. As Robert Thorne tries to figure out how to tell his wife Kathy that their newborn son died, a priest approaches him with a solution. Adopt a baby boy whose mother died giving birth to him and raise him as their own. Robert accepts, thinking that Kathy will never have to know. But a series of freak accidents and terrible deaths that follow young Damien make Robert conclude that the boy may in fact be the Antichrist. Look at me, Damien! It's all for you! Many of the cast and crew members contended with their own curse-like happenings during production on The Omen. Actor Gregory Peck, producer Mace Neufeld, and writer David Seltzer all had their planes struck by lightning. And producer Harvey Bernhard almost got electrocuted as well during filming in Rome. In another, even more tragic plane-related incident, the private jet that Peck was supposed to take to set before production was delayed crashed into a car, killing everyone aboard the plane as well as the car's passengers. If that wasn't enough, both Neufeld and director Richard Donner narrowly avoided being in buildings that were targeted by IRA bombings. Did a movie about a killer nurse really need to be filmed in three dimensions? Probably not, but that didn't stop the team behind Nurse 3D from doing it anyway. This trashy little horror flick centers on Abby Russell, the committed head nurse at All Saints Memorial Hospital who saves lives by day and then takes them at night. Russell's side hustle involves using her sexuality to seduce men who cheat on their significant others, and then brutally murdering them. While she claims that she's doing the world a service by raiding the streets of terrible people, she delights in her work just a bit too much. Paz de la Huerta is perfect as the killer nurse, striking the perfect balance between allure and sadism. Unfortunately, she fractured her spine during the shooting of a stunt when she was struck by a speeding ambulance. While De La Huerta received more than $70,000 in workers' compensation for the spinal injury, it was only the beginning of a larger legal battle. The studio, dissatisfied with the voiceover narration De La Huerta recorded in post-production, brought in another actress to record the lines without notifying her, 
De La Huerta claimed that this was done deliberately, in retaliation for her filing a compensation claim, so she sued Lionsgate for $55 million, stating that their actions damaged her career. Unfortunately for her, though, Lionsgate ultimately won the case. One of the most infamous horror movies ever made, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre gave the world the gift of the wonderfully sadistic Leatherface. The simple yet terrifying tale of a group of young people who fall prey to a cannibalistic family launched a franchise that has tried, yet never quite managed to reach the perverse heights reached by the original. Despite the title, the film is surprisingly light on blood and guts. But the dirty grindhouse tone makes the audience feel like they're watching something that they really shouldn't be. As expected, the low-budget film demanded a lot from its cast and crew, who endured quite a bit during production in the scorching Texas heat. Actress Terry McMinn filmed so many bruising takes of her chase scene that she took shots of Jack Daniels to relax. Leatherface actor Gunnar Hansen got incredibly high from pot brownies on the set and operated a live chainsaw around other actors, and actress Marilyn Burns twisted her ankle jumping from a six-foot scaffold. Those were only a few of the issues the team suffered, but cinematographer Daniel Pearl believed that the rough experience was worth it. He told The Telegraph, I believe that the dire circumstances added to the film. If we'd been comfy, if everybody had their own trailer, I'm not so sure you'd feel the horror in quite the way you do. The Exorcist has held on to its reputation as one of the scariest movies ever made for 50 years, and for good reason. Director William Friedkin and screenwriter William Peter Blatty crafted such a harrowing depiction of a demonically possessed girl that it still manages to terrify audiences today. Beyond the shock value, the film boasts an amazingly talented cast in the form of Linda Blair, Jason Miller, Max von Sydow, and Ellen Burstyn, who provide a level of dramatic heft rarely seen in the horror genre. It wasn't easy bringing The Exorcist to life, as it put much of the cast and crew in danger. Burstyn endured a life-threatening back injury that she has dealt with ever since. In an interview with HuffPost, the actress recounted that she experienced considerable pain during the scene in which her possessed daughter hits her so hard that she flies across the room. Burstyn told Friedkin that the man operating the cable tied to her was pulling her too hard. But Friedkin responded that the shot needed to look real. She recalled, I said I know it has to look real, but I'm telling you, I could get hurt. And so he said, okay, don't pull her so hard. But then I'm not sure that he didn't cancel that behind my back because the guy smashed me into the floor. Despite the injury, Burstyn still considered Friedkin a genius and a friend until his death in 2023. Ghostland, also known as Incident in a Ghostland, opens with a woman named Colleen as she takes her teenage daughters, Beth and Vera, to the house they inherited from a recently deceased relative. While settling into their new home, the three are attacked by two mysterious assailants, known only as the Fat Man and the Candy Truck Woman. Colleen kills them, but they are all left with the scars of that horrible night for the rest of their lives. Years later, an adult Beth is called back to the old house by her sister, who suffers recurring visions of that traumatic event. It isn't long before Beth experiences bizarre hallucinations herself. The film's depictions of brutal physical and sexual violence certainly aren't for the faint-hearted, but the shooting of it took an even bigger toll on Taylor Hickson, who played young Vera. Hickson endured a gruesome facial injury while filming a scene that required her to repeatedly pound on a glass door that eventually shattered. She fell through it, greatly cutting her face to the point of requiring around 70 stitches. The actress told Deadline, The craft services lady held my face together with napkins in her hands. She went through so many napkins. There was so much blood. Oh my god, I look heinous. Hickson claimed that the producer and director told her that the stunt was completely safe, prompting her to file a lawsuit against the film's production company. Like Steven Spielberg's other big 1982 hit, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Poltergeist follows a sweet suburban family that deals with an otherworldly event. But unlike E.T., which features a whole lot more childlike wonder, Poltergeist takes audiences into a world of terror, populated by a large hungry tree, a killer clown doll, and corpses exploding from the ground. The Freeling family's young daughter, Carol Ann, has been communicating with spirits through the television set. And it isn't long before a gateway to a dimension filled with malevolent entities opens up and snatches her. Naturally, the family reaches out to paranormal investigators for help. The killer clown doll delivers some of the film's most memorable moments, giving plenty of young viewers many sleepless nights as children. However, the person it likely terrified the most was actor Oliver Robbins, who played little Robbie Freeling. For the scene in which the clown doll attacks him, a mechanical version was built that had a fake arm that actually wrapped itself around Robbins' neck. One problem? The filmmakers underestimated the mechanism's strength, and Robbins started choking as the cameras rolled. Spielberg and director Toby Hooper thought that the actor was just ad-lipping as part of his performance, but they soon realized that he wasn't acting at all. 
Luckily, Spielberg rushed to pry the doll off of Robbins before it strangled him to death. Not many people can say they've had their life saved by one of America's greatest directors. Halloween 3 Season of the Witch was the first film in the series that didn't feature the killer known as The Shape, but he came back to terrorize the town of Haddonfield in the aptly named Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Taking place 10 years after the events of the first two films, Michael Myers awakens from his coma to target his young niece, Jamie Lloyd. One standout sequence features Michael chasing Jamie and her foster sister Rachel through a large house to the roof. To film the scene, a fake roof was built, but since the production team was working in Utah on a late March night, the tiles tended to get pretty slippery. Ellie Cornell, who played Rachel, was the main victim, as she slipped and got a large scratch on her stomach from an exposed staple. She was lucky enough to not have any vital organs damaged, but the on-site medical professional still took the situation extremely seriously. You know, it was just a surface wound, but I think the set medic went bonkers just because we had more to shoot. So they patched me up and we went back to work. With the tagline, half dinosaur, half sea monster, all trouble, it's pretty obvious that Poseidon Rex isn't exactly what you'd call elevated horror. The low-budget film follows scuba diver and treasure hunter Jackson Slate as he searches for lost Mayan gold in a marine sinkhole off the coast of Belize. Unfortunately for him and everyone else in the area, Jackson ends up setting off a chain of explosions that awakens an amphibious CGI dinosaur with the taste for human flesh. Poseidon Rex may be a laughable little creature feature, but there's nothing funny about the injury that actor Corin Nemec suffered during its production. While filming a scene out in the ocean, the boat Nemec was on crashed into a semi-submerged barge, shattering his leg and causing massive blood loss. The actor filed a lawsuit for more than $25,000 alleging that not only did the production negligently hire an inept boat operator, but that they didn't have any workers' comp insurance. Ultimately, Nemec didn't return to the film, and Brian Krause took over the role in his place, 